Hey, welcome to the City Life Family Podcast, a family podcast for the young and the old, and we desire to equip people in the work of ministry and encourage them along the way. I am with two of my friends and heroes in the faith, Todd and Kristen Richardson, and uh, uh, Todd is an elder at a local church here at Mosaic. Um, Todd and Kristen have been married a while. They've been part of City Light Omaha. Uh, their son is a pastor, Jacob, who's leading in our city. We love these guys. They've started a ministry specifically helping uh, people work through sexual brokenness and see recovery and redemption there. And so um, we love them. We want to invite them. The reason we're wanting to invite them here today is because we really want to be talking about marriage. Um, how do we as pastors care for people who are married? How do we tend to our own marriages? Um, and the reason we want to bring this up is we've seen all too often when the marriage in a pastor's life breaks down, it's only a matter of time till the ministry comes off mm-hmm. the, the, the rails. And I've been a part of ministry where there are seasons of my marriage that were hard, uh, conflicts happening. Uh, my wife's dealing with postpartum depression. She's dealing with father wound stuff we're working through. And when that happens, uh, if I would have just turned my back and said, oh, the ministry's growing, I don't have time. I need to just keep pushing forward, keep the, keep the ball rolling. Yeah. I would have lost her heart. I probably wouldn't be in ministry. Uh, we would not be able to just co-labor in the way that we do now. And I see that all the time. Pastors making choices. How do I keep my hand to this plow? This, this church feels so fragile and so needy. Mm-hmm. And yet at the same time, my wife has needs and our marriage has needs. Mm-hmm. And if I don't put, keep my hand on that plow, mm-hmm. the ball drops, hearts break, bitterness happens. There's a lack of intimacy. Things break down. And instead of love and respecting each other, there's bitterness, unforgiveness, uh, and all this resentment. And so mm-hmm. we don't want that. Uh, as I talk across the, the City Light family to pastors, they're all in different seasons. You've got some, like your son, just got married, mm-hmm. just had their first baby. Mm-hmm. You've got others that are grandparents. Mm-hmm. But across the board, they're dealing with, hey, how, how do we deal with this? Uh, some of our spouses have mental illness. Some of them come from se- sexual backgrounds that that have a lot of brokenness and abuse, and they've got woundedness, and they're trying to figure it out. So all that to say, this is a big issue, yeah. I think, across the board. It's one that really matters. and But at the same time, I have so much hope because what God has done in my life, in my marriage, mm-hmm. um, has been a tremendous grace. Mm-hmm. God has answered our prayers. Yeah. God's healed some of our brokenness. Mm-hmm. God's kept us holy and unto himself. Mm-hmm. And so you say, Jesus, thank you. I yeah. think you know, how God has shaped so many of our pastors through the humility it requires to have a gospel-centered marriage. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's been a beautiful thing. So I'm excited to have you guys here. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Thank Todd you. and Kristen. I want to ask you guys a question to kick us off. Like, why do you care about marriages? Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, you start a podcast, you speak at conferences, you meet with couples. How did you get to the point where you're like, I think God's given us a voice for this? Mm-hmm. Why, how did you get there? Yeah. I think it's really interesting just to to listen to what you just described mm-hmm. with respect to your marriage. Yes, and and I think there were a lot of parallels. Yeah, uh, to to our yes. relationship as well. Yeah, where you know we went through those times where yep. there was difficulty. We had um, a pretty long season where we could not have yep. the hard conversations mm-hmm. with each other. Yep. You know, without oh, yeah. having uh, it. Blow up. We used to say we're just never going to get on the same page, mm. as particularly around sexuality. Yeah. But just we're never going to get on the same page. Yeah. And so we experienced that in our relationship, and then we had. Uh, I think Kristen's going to share. We'll share in a minute just uh, a revelation that she had that kind of started us on the path. I yeah. would say to both healing in our own relationship. Yeah. But also, God just started to open doors for us yeah. that we just kind of stepped through. Yep. And so it wasn't, if you would have told us that we'd be having a podcast yes. talking about these issues or <laughs> yeah. speaking at conferences, like you yes. said, those, we would have said, nah, there's no chance that that's <laughs> right. the case. Uh, but God really did just yeah. open those, yeah. those doors yeah. for us, and we stepped in, and it just kept, and then just mm-hmm. opportunities kept presenting themselves as we continue to seek healing, seek uh, intimacy in our relationship, Mm -hmm. uh, seek, you know, putting Christ at the center of these difficult issues as we all, as we did all of that and, and experienced that healing, it's just, we just felt like the doors open and we just had that sense that we just, yeah, we just, we have, yeah, yeah, that was really it. That's awesome. Yeah. 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 
So um, in 2014, I, I know this because I called Todd. I was like, oh, I think I just have a re- had a revelation from the Lord. He's like, journal that, write that down. <laughs> it was good. So I was just having my prayer time, and it was in that moment. I was just thanking the Lord for, for our intimacy and for our relationship. And the Lord stopped me in that place and yes. spoke something to me where he said, your husband's pursuit of you is a picture of my pursuit of you. Come on. Yeah. And then he said, your response to your husband's pursuit yes. is a picture of your response to my pursuit. Mm. Yeah. And, and there was more um, along those lines, but that was the big picture. And it was in that moment that I knew the Lord was speaking something really deep to my heart that was a brand new concept. I had never heard that said, mm-hmm. or I'd never thought of it. I, it was just a brand new thing. And... It was after that that the Lord um, reminded me of this verse that I had read before, but it had never, mm. I just, it never sunk in. Yeah. And so it's Ephesians 5, 31 and 32, which is, For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, yes. and the two will become one flesh. And then it goes on to say, This mystery is profound, but I am talking about Christ and the church. Mm. Yeah. And so here we are hearing Paul say, this picture of marriage, this yes. picture of one flesh is meant to, it's a mystery, but it is meant to be a picture of our relationship with Christ and Come Christ's on. relationship with the church. And so that was like, wow, okay, mm-hmm. okay. I know you have so much to speak into this. And so that is what really started us on a journey of, because it really was around sexuality at that yes. time too. And it's all intertwined. Our oneness yes. is spiritual, it's emotional, and it is physical. Yes. Yes. And so he really just started opening up doors, just showing us so much more at that time. And that's really when I felt like we we just started to seek the Lord in it and we started to experience openness where we started to share with one yes. another and experience just deep healing with one another, um, confessing sin, yeah. coming mm. out of hiding with things. Um, yeah, how would you? What, what yeah, you no, I, absolutely. There? Yeah, that's what it was. And wow. and mm-hmm. and as we as we did that, and realized just how that it, that yeah. our our marriage is a picture of that yes. relationship yeah. between yes. Christ and the church. And so yeah. as you begin to process that more and more yep. and mm-hmm. and kind of wrap your begin to wrap your mind around that more and more mm-hmm. I think we we realized that uh, we were we probably hadn't a lot of the reasons we couldn't get on the same page with right. things is we were not viewing our marriage from a gospel wow focused lens yeah and so mm-hmm. as we began to realize okay I know we need to be able to be intimate with each other in our yep. in our lives. Yep. And we need to be able to confess sin. We need to be able to share those places that we have held yes. uh, inside for a long yes. time and never yes. been willing yes. to, to talk yes. about. Yep. Yes. Um, and that when we have the mindset that, when you begin to realize you have the mindset that, okay, if, if I can do that and mm. she's going to respond to me mm. with the kind of grace that Christ responds to us yep. when we are... Mm coming to him with all those yes. deep things, mm-hmm. then that allows that those walls to break down yep. and for vulnerability to, to right. exist in the relationship. Yes. But it takes that step of it being, does. it takes a lot of uh, trust in, in being able to share those things, yes. but then it also, and, and trust that you, you, that you can, you believe that the response is going to be one of right. tell me more mm-hmm. as opposed to a response of, I can't believe you're yes. doing that or defensiveness. Yeah. 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 Because our relationship with Christ is a covenant relationship. Mm. And it's, I mean, it's he is not going to leave or forsake us. And and so this one flesh that is husband and wife, it is it is a covenant relationship. Yes. Yep. And so that should be the safest place Great. that we have yes. to be able to yes. share yes. life with one yes. another. And if it's not, then we need to start asking the questions why. Right. 
you know, and really go into that, asking the Lord why and, and get healing those areas mm-hmm. where we need mm-hmm. healing so that we can be the safest place for each other. Yeah, yeah. just to, to backtrack, you guys yeah. jumped right on in and I am so thankful you did. <laughs> I asked you guys to get, you know, hey, yeah. tell me your personal yeah. and, and what started is you're praying, spending time in God's word and you probably read that passage or heard it preached on numerous times, but there's times where the spirit of God just Absolutely. pokes your heart yeah. so deeply and in almost an unexpected way <laughs> that makes you just say, okay, I can't move past that. Slow down. Yes. What's going on? Yes. And uh, through the word and the spirit, God worked in you. Mm-hmm. And um, so thankful for that. But mm-hmm. really, the question we love on this podcast is, okay, what does the Bible have to say about marriage? Because marriage yeah. is not just a yeah. idea that we need to give you some self-help tips so that you can live your best life mm-hmm. now. Mm-hmm. It's exactly what you're saying. This is rooted in scripture, and there's this gospel dance happening mm-hmm. all across the New Testament of Jesus coming and pursuing his bride, which is the New Testament church. And it is a messy, unfaithful, Mm -hmm. um, rebellious bride. Mm -hmm. And he loves her and he pursues her. He lays his life down for her Mm -hmm. and he dies for her. And ultimately that we'd be washed and held. And he's this Mm -hmm. faithful, faithful uh, husband to his bride that goes to great lengths to give his very best when she's at her very worst. Mm -hmm. And now we are the New Testament church. Mm -hmm. And looking at Jesus and his sacrificial nature his steadfast love and the way that he's seen the worst and hasn't moved away from us, but Mm -hmm. consistently pursues us when we're in the far country. Mm -hmm. And you say, okay, now, under that kind of stable leadership, is there any part of my heart that I cannot share? Mm -hmm. Because he knows it. And is there any part of my life I need to withhold, or can I live open-handedly before him? Mm -hmm. And that gospel dance needs to happen in our homes as husbands take on the role of Christ, saying, I will pursue, I will provide, I will lay down my life, I will protect and I will I will cherish. Mm-hmm. And when we say intimacy, it's you know, it's it's that word is almost triggering some people. They just immediately think sexual. That's part of it. Mm-hmm. But it is the emotional and the mm-hmm. physical. Absolutely. And yes. Yes. and if we don't think about this gospel dance, that husbands, mm-hmm. you've been called to be Christ to your mm-hmm. wife. And wives, you're called to be the church that is surrendered, loving, respectful, mm-hmm. trusting, um, su- submitting, and also being intimately open. Like you said, there's mm-hmm. walls. Before we know it, if we're not shaped by the gospel, we've been shaped by culture, traditions, Mm -hmm. parents' patterns of ministry or marriage, and we're taking on these cultural narratives, and before we know it, we're playing a a role out in our marriage that wasn't really shaped by scripture, Mm -hmm. it was literally shaped by our circumstances, Mm -hmm. and and so I think that pattern happens all the time. People wake up and are like, I'm just doing the thing. I don't even know what I'm doing. I'm just doing the thing. I'm just doing the marriage thing. I'm roommates, and I don't know how to have hard conversations because they don't know it's a covenant. And they don't know how to be a husband because they don't know how it looks like to be selfless. Mm-hmm. And I think everybody's raising their hand saying, you go first. Yeah. I need you to be intimate. Mm-hmm. I need you to be honest. Mm-hmm. I need, yeah. you, And I need you to be a provider. I need you to be a champion and a supporter. And everybody's saying, you go first. And it's like, no, no, that doesn't work. Yeah. You know, it doesn't work. So yeah. um, I, I would love to ask you a question just about, and this is where I was opening up, is just like sometimes people don't know they're not healthy. Mm-hmm. Like they don't even know in their marriage they're not healthy. Mm-hmm. So for a pastor listening, ministry leader, mm-hmm. what are some questions you would ask? Do you see any common themes that happen in couples where they're just doing the thing, mm-hmm. but they're either drifting towards an unhealthy place mm-hmm. or this is really getting to a crisis point? And so what questions do you ask to say, are we even healthy in our marriage? How do we get healthy? How do we even discern if we're healthy? Like, mm-hmm. let's. what would be questions that you would mm-hmm. be asking mm-hmm. there? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Any themes, okay, okay. Points, the first, yeah, yeah, the first thing that comes to my mind is, do I feel like I know my spouse, mm. and do I feel known by my spouse? Mm-hmm. You know, I, I think that's. I mean, for us, for so long, we it was very surface level. Yeah. We, it was we, it was we did not know each yeah. other. And that has completely transformed our relationship. Just the vulnerability that yeah. this is, this is where I'm at. Yes. This is what I struggle with. And just like, I mean, it, it once we have that picture of the, our, this relationship is meant to mirror our relationship with Christ, mm. we can always look at that and say, with Christ, can I go to him with anything? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Yes. He is saying, yes, yeah. please. That is what creates intimacy with yeah. him. And it's the same with our yeah. relationship with our spouse. So so I think that's a really big question. The other thing that comes to my mind right away is, do I feel safe to be able to share mm. anything with my spouse? Wow. And if I don't feel safe to do that, there needs to be a conversation. Yeah. There needs to be, and, and if that, you know, I mean, there needs to be help 
in that area, the Lord needs to intervene in whatever way because you have to feel like you can go to your spouse. That should be the safest relationship we have. Mm. It really should. And if it's not, then, then... there's, there's just broken. there's healing. Yeah. There's something that yeah, there just is healing that needs to be had, and probably more than likely in both people, <laughs> yes. because we all come with brokenness. Right. So wow, right? Yeah, yeah. And I think when you ask those questions, if you feel like the answer is no, yep. or I'm not sure, yep. I think instead of you know kind of surrendering to shame in that, mm. I think the being curious, mm-hmm. like l- asking yeah. those questions. Yeah. Why Why do I feel the way that I feel? And asking mm-hmm. the Lord those questions, Lord, yeah. why do I feel the way that I feel? Why is it that I don't yeah. feel like I can share um, whatever with my with my spouse? Right. And and I think mm-hmm. as as we did that, He is faithful yeah. <laughs> to to begin to reveal. The, the underlying yeah. things, the roots yep. that need to be pulled up, the healing that needs to take yep. place in the relationship, mm-hmm. and yep. in, in in not only in the relationship but in us individually. Yeah, hundred percent. And as you guys talk about, I love your question because it's literally everything you're saying is so rooted in scripture. It's mm-hmm. like, you know, we got to remember where we were created. Mm-hmm. We were created before the face of God. Mm-hmm. We saw His face delight in us. Mm-hmm. Right. We had no part of us that was covered. Right. Uh, we were fully known by Him, and we knew Him. Yeah. And we were fully known by one another, and yeah. we didn't feel any guilt and shame. And right. then sin enters the world, we cover ourselves, and we've been yeah. covering ourselves ever since. That's That's right. We come into this world, exactly. we realize it's it's a scary world, and we, we put on survival tactics. Mm-hmm. And part of what the gospel has to do is help you to say, no, you've been, you've been wearing some stuff and mm-hmm. covering yourself, yeah. hiding yourself, yeah. pr- and, and really putting on this mask of yourself just to survive and mm-hmm. get the love and acceptance you think you need. Mm-hmm. How does the gospel now say, this is your identity, yeah. mm-hmm. and this is the dance we get to play? And um, the question about being safe is huge, because that should mm-hmm. be the place. You should yeah. be known in your vertical relationship with God, but this yeah. is, should be the place yeah. that you have no fear to say, right. I just feel insecure. Yeah. I feel lonely. Yes. I feel unwanted. I mm-hmm. feel insignificant. Yes. Like, so what yes. tools do you give? Because I do want to say, that feels so different yeah. than how I visualize most American marriages functioning. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And it's beautiful in the gospel. I think it's godly. I think it's scriptural. I don't know if people have done it. I think right. everybody in the church would say yes and amen. And they'd go right. home and then sit on the couch and be it? like, I literally don't know how to do this. Yeah. So, and so we actually do have, yes. have a tool yeah. that that we would recommend that yes. like everybody Yes. Do. Yes. Uh, and it, it is, it, it, Kristen should grab, she brought the book I with her. I really love it. It's called Connection Codes. Yeah. Come on. And, and really what this book has done in, 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 in our relationship yeah. mm-hmm. is it gives tools mm-hmm. to help you learn how to share emotions with yeah. each other to process their emotions. They have something in that that they call the an, an emotion wheel yeah. that has you know, anger, yes. fear, uh, sadness. joy, sadness, right. yep. uh, um, um, the, so shame. the shame, eight core kind of emotion. guilt, yeah. the yeah. Eight core emotion. Yeah. Yes. yeah. And really just it, it's a, it's a there's a little exercise in there that you can do with each other uh, in oh, yeah. fairly quickly where you can process through uh, and they recommend you do it a couple yep. times a day, just yes. a very quick little time of processing where you say, uh, if there's something that's come up in your relationship mm-hmm. or something that's come up, otherwise you just say, you know, I felt anger in yes. that, in this way. I felt shame. I felt guilt. I felt sadness. I felt right. loneliness, uh, joy, fear. And, and it just, it, it, it is a way to begin to learn how to share with each other. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and I just think it's a tool. I, yes. We just don't. Yeah, do that like yeah. you said, and it's so hard. And and the part of it that is, um, y- y- the person who's the receiver of it, mm-hmm. you're not allowed to get defensive. You're not allowed to <laughs> yes. say you shouldn't feel that way, or oh come on, that's not true. Right. All you can do is just say ooh, mm. or <laughs> yeah. I get that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and, and you yeah. just and, and that's yeah. it. And yeah. and then even when when you're done sharing, it's not then then you go okay, but you shouldn't feel that way. And you do I got a verse for it, you, girl. Come right. on yeah. now, <laughs> exactly. Oh, and here we go. Th- there's something in mm-hmm. that that knowing that you can share mm-hmm. safely and vulnerably, and mm-hmm. the only response you're going to get is, ooh, yeah, 
Yeah. It's it's so helpful. Yeah, it's so it. powerful. And and you can release that emotion. It doesn't mm. you don't you, you don't just bring it back in. If if someone says, "Well, <laughs> you know, I didn't do that or yeah. or you shouldn't feel that way whatever then you you just okay okay so you just hold it in yeah. and so you and you become unhealthy mm-hmm. i mean that is very it's a very unhealthy thing to un, to not process our emotion mm-hmm. and so if you're able to process it let it go it is i mean we have experienced so i mean every yeah. time just the freedom of oh wow hmm hmm suddenly now that doesn't, no doesn't deal. hold so much yeah. power yeah. and yeah. the person listening who is saying mm, yeah, and, and and can't be defensive, but is just receiving and listening yeah. and understanding. God does something in your heart and in, in my heart when I do that, where all of a sudden I have a compassion and an understanding where it's like, wow, I actually do get that. I, I understand <laughs> right. that you could feel that way from what I said or what I did or, you yeah. know, and it it is... It's the simplest tool ever. And there's more in that book. That book is, I feel like every person, we will give that book to every single married couple from here on out (laughs) because it is, it is life changing. Truly the tools in that book are life changing in connection. Yes. So anyway. Love that connection. codes. So yeah, get the book connection codes. Uh, One of the things they're describing is talking in other books have said it, the eight heart languages, really the feelings and and it's just a different way because men, we are, I think, uniquely trained to communicate through story and narrative, mm-hmm. but you can do that. Here's how your day was. These are the events of my day. Yes. We haven't ever talked to you about when we felt insecure, when we felt shame, right. when we were made happy. What was the best? Right. So even reframing the conversations in our marriage to, hey, we're going to mm-hmm. sit down. We kind of have a rhythm that we fight for. At the end of the evening, our mm-hmm. kids can still go to bed. We don't have teenagers, so somewhere in that season. Mm-hmm. But- just squaring up and saying, yeah. hey, what was the, the most beautiful part of your day where you mm-hmm. felt joy? What was the yeah. hardest part of your day? How you doing? And like you said, I will just confess to you, I have lost the heart of my wife times because I'm interpreting her day and I'm taking responsibility for how she's feeling. Exactly. Oh, and now so I want to shut it down because yes. it's like, well, I must not be enough. Dude, I didn't yes. do enough. And Dude. now I got to convince her of everything. I, and it, that's not what that's she's it. saying. That's she's it. just trying to say, yes, I'm not in a good place because yes. of this child. That doesn't yeah. mean, that doesn't, I didn't do anything wrong. I don't know. <laughs> you know, and even if it was me, even if right. she was upset that I ghosted on a text, I don't have to get defensive. And that's where we come back to the gospel. Yeah, My righteousness is in Christ. My job is to receive this feedback and love yeah. her. Yeah. She's not telling this to wound me. It, right. it is just, it, so, um, we feel but, what we feel. Yeah, you, if you yes. want to, as a, so good, as a man, if you want to win the, the heart of your wife, yes, you start doing that with your children at bedtime mm, yes. and, and ask mm. them about their day and teach them how to process their emotions and yes. share that with them. Yes. I guarantee you it will. That, that, yeah. <laughs> got an emotionally will healthy male in the house. It, it, what? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. That's amazing. So, uh, so for married couples, yeah. especially pastors, like you've seen it with your son, you've seen it with me, you've been in proximity to me and Gavin, others. Yeah. Is there anything that you would say, hey, you guys are in spiritual leadership. You're an elder, so you know mm-hmm. some of the weight you feel. How do you guys fight for your own marriage? What encouragement do you give to pastors and leaders and elders? Um, and really, this is just what advice would you give to your own son? I mean, you mm-hmm. see it in the game. You see mm-hmm. how he's trying to manage the church mm-hmm. and be a provider mm-hmm. and now pay attention to his wife, who's a new mom. Mm-hmm. And it's just a lot of pulling on him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, anything that you guys, any encouragements you would be giving, mm-hmm. be paying attention to this and mm-hmm. little rhythms that you would in- instruct us in. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. So good. Well, I think a lot of things we've already yeah. talked about, yeah. obviously. Yeah. I mean, just, just, so, just mm-hmm. uh, um, doing those those things in mm-hmm. an intentional yep. way, mm-hmm. uh, realizing that w- when we, in ministry, we are, you know, we have a, a passion for the gospel yep. and uh, a passion to share that with people and for the church to thrive and all yep. of those things. And if our marriage is supposed to be a picture oh, of that, on, then that should be the same way that we approach our marriage relationship. And we, we, we truly look at our marriage as, as a picture yeah. mm-hmm. of the gospel and recognize that if that is true, which yeah. the Bible very clearly paints that story as you described it, oh, yeah. then that relationship is the most important human relationship mm-hmm. that we can have. That's right. And so... To have that be our primary yep. investment yep. is so critical. Yep. Uh, and 
so that, I mean, just, mm-hmm. just mm-hmm. approaching with that type of mindset sure. is powerful. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes, I agree. And just truly the check-ins of how are you? Come on. How is your heart yeah. truly on a regular basis? I mean, daily is ideal, but is, I mean, just often. And then, and just caring for, first of all, caring for yourself as a pastor, you need time. Yeah. You need time to be intimate with the yeah. Lord and just be with yeah. him. Let him just love on you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And to. then once you have what like then you have you have so much more just to be able to love on your right. wife. And I think especially for moms these I mean I think about about Abigail and I think about Kristen and you know they're these moms that are just they have so much demand yes. on them. So then for you to be able to say what do you need yeah. that's really going to help you? And I'm sure yeah. you've done that. And and giving them space. You know, I've heard about dads, you know, like examples of, okay, I'm going to take care of the dishes. Oh, yeah. I'm going to take care of the kids. You go take a bath. Mm. You go care for yourself. You just do what you need to do to care for yourself. Yes. Get away. You know, go to a hotel. I've heard of people going oh, yeah. to a hotel for a couple hours in the afternoon, a half yes. day hotel stay, just to read, to just be, just yes. have time. And I think if a, if a wife sees their husband caring enough to say, what do you need? And yep. go do that. And I'm yep. going to give you the space to do that. That just speaks volumes. So just just being seen yep. and understood, walking in the door and recognizing your wife first before yes. your kids and just loving on her. And just yep. it really is just a seeing her and valuing her yes. as a person and what she needs and hearing her heart. Yep. I just think those are, if, if that's happening yep. and, and you're truly connecting at a heart level, knowing you are sharing things with each other that yep. only the two of you know. Come on. You know, it's the deepest yep. relationship you have other than yes. that your relationship with Christ. Mm-hmm. Those things just knit hearts together they in do. such a deep way that it's yes. it's it's everything you need. Yes. Yeah. I had a I had a story when I was meeting with a group of guys and we were walking through Ephesians 5 yes. and how to love your wife. wife, you know, as Christ loved the church and and uh one of the things that I talked about with the men was was what Kristen said about uh when you walk in the house, right. uh, just that the mindset that like, you are going to give to your wife when you mm-hmm. and when you walk in the house to to acknowledge her first. Yes. And one of the guys was saying, you know, he always he had two little kids and he would walk in the house and and it would it would just be right away his focus would be on the the kids and yep. and after we talked about that he came in that next day and went straight to his wife, greeted her, how are you doing? How was your day? Their little girl, um, who he was usually just immediately going yes. to, she kind of looked at them, and then she came up. She put her arms around both of them, you know, and, and kind of hugged them. Come and, on. and he said his wife was like, "You came to me first. Come on." She, she recognized it, yes. and it was like so powerful in her heart yes. that that he did that. And yeah. I just think that is that is such a cool picture. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I love that little things, but mm-hmm. Ephesians 5 is the model. So I just think yeah. come back to that cuz I keep yes. all the advice I'd give it's right there. You exactly. know, wash men, wash your wife with yes. the word, love yes. her as yourself. That's the the advice of like giving her a nap. Like that doesn't sound spiritual, but I know Austin Edwards, they had three little kids in 3 years and he would literally say, "Kristen, you go to a hotel room, you get a mm-hmm. night by yourself and journal and get some introvert mm-hmm. space. Yeah. I'll take the kids and be the fun dad on Friday night." And he's just saying, what do you need? It's yes. not about me. Yes. How do I serve you like Christ has yes. served the church? Yes. And it is that mindset. It Todd, is. I can't tell you how many times I've had to literally pray, Spirit of God, I have never needed you more than this mm-hmm. moment right now. It is 536. Mm-hmm. I'm pulling into my driveway. Mm-hmm. I got four needy kids yeah. and a wife who's underwater. In the next five hours, I'm either going to blow up my family or I'm going to be a picture mm-hmm. of a self-controlled, joyful man. Mm-hmm. One of the two things is going to happen. Mm-hmm. Does it make any sense? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, But God is so faithful there. So yeah. I just want to trust each other mm-hmm. um, for that. As if you're listening, yeah. you know, I don't know, but as I meet with so many pastors and spouses, and I'm ranting now, but just want to, <laughs> I want to just say this word because it's so powerful. I don't think anybody gets to the finish line in their marriage without having their own relationship with Christ and constantly practicing the gospel in their marriage. And I specifically right now, I think there's a seed of bitterness that has happened in so many spouses that needs to be uprooted yeah. and attacked with the gospel, mm. and there needs to be forgiveness granted, and mm. people need to come out of hiding and, yes. and take it from the darkness to the light. Yes. And um, and so I just want you to know, I've had to practice that in our marriage. How do I forgive yeah. my wife for words that have been spoken? Yeah. She's had to forgive me for 
insecurities that I've acted on. I gotta try, I gotta grow this thing, or she's not gonna love me if I don't perform. Mm. All these old wounds that we operate mm-hmm. out of, and uh, you're not gonna get a perfect pastor, but guess what? The mm-hmm. gospel's for you. Yeah. And so, um, thank you so much, Richard mm-hmm. Sins, for this time yeah. with you today. I hope you guys that are listening are encouraged. Um, how can people follow you if they want more of your podcast or more of your time? How can they get a hold of you guys? Yeah. Well, from the podcast standpoint, our podcast is called Fearless in Love. Yeah. And so it's just Fearless in Love podcast. Yeah. It's it's on all Everything. the places yeah, you find this podcast. So awesome. yeah, so you, you can find us there. Okay. Uh, there's a there is a, a Fearless in Love podcast at gmail.com is an email yep. address that we have there yes. if, if you want to reach out to awesome. us on specific questions yes. uh, we'd love that and, and so if you yeah. want to hang out with Todd and Kristen in person they're at Mosaic Church here in Omaha Nebraska so just go visit them and say hi they're <laughs> there you people. Go. thank you so much yeah. for your time thank appreciate you, you guys so much, yep. Chris. Yep. thanks Chris thank bye you. bye